Do you want to know how to crack a job in Deloitte company? And this video is for you. Probably interview questions and also answered in a strategical way is very much important. These are the questions asked for a two to three years of an experienced probably a developer in, in, in the interview Deloitte and he shared that questions to me on the LinkedIn. So I thought of making one full end to end video and uh, the best part is I have answered all that questions so that you can be take a note and you can also implement the same strategies for your upcoming interviews. So let's see the first question what they have faced. So how do you create a relationship between a tables in the Power BI? So the reason behind asking this question, they have directly started with the data modeling concepts uh, because anyway, it's a three years of an experienced. Okay. So the explanation should be more relative to the real time experience. Okay. The explanation can go like this. Okay. So we can able to create the relationship in the, especially in the model view. So where we can drag and drop all the relative, relative fields, uh, between the tables. And, uh, especially we have to ensure one side has a unique values, primary can other has like, uh, you know, uh, one too many relationships. So we have four kinds of relationships in this, uh, data modeling one that is one to one, one to many, many to many and many to one. But in the, in the projects, we always make sure to have a relationship between one to many between the tables. So that creates a better kind of a solutions for our data modeling. And, uh, we can also, you can also add a data cross filter direction. We, we have in this data modeling concept, single and both direction. So single direction will, will create, uh, reusability and it all it avoids some complexity in your uh, data usage and we also have a both direction as well so in, in when i'm working with this project so i always ensure in my relationships in my data modeling to form with a star schema with a dimension as well as a fact table so this way you can able to answer but always talk with real time example and the next question, can you explain the difference between star schema and snowflake schema in data modeling? This is a follow up based question because in the previous question, you have faced uh, uh, data modeling schema. So you have added a term called schema. So now they wanted to understand whether you are aware with this difference or not. So the answer goes like this. Yes, uh, star schema and snowflake schema. Uh, let's understand. L let me explain the star schema. So in the star schema, all the dimension tables are connected to the fact table, centralized fact table in the form of a star. So central fact table is basically uh, have all the transactional data or the fact data and uh, surrounded by the dimensions which are true dimension tables. So it has one to many direction and snowflake schema where uh, dimension tables are connected to another sub dimension table and all these dimension tables are connected to again the central fact table. So, but uh, we always prefer a star schema because Power works best with the star schema for better performance and uh, there may be some cases where we always try to convert snowflake schemas into star schema wherever possible. So this way you can able to tackle it and if you need it, you can try to add more and more examples as well. And the next question, uh, how do you write a DAX formula to calculate year on year growth? Okay. So this is basically to check whether you are, how far we are good with the DAX and this, these questions are specially related into time intelligence DAX. Uh, yes, uh, this, this DAX I have implemented in my project, uh, which is related to time intelligence DAX I have used. Uh, firstly, I wanted to understand uh, year on year growth. So I'll create a total sales using a variables. Then I will also use uh, another variable called previous year sales. I'll calculate uh, total sales same period last year using the date. And uh, I'll, I'll first I'll identify total sales. I'll also identify the previous year sales. So with these two variables, now I wanted to identify the year on year growth. So the year on year growth like this. So we can divide the total sales minus previous year total sales comma previous year sales comma zero. So we can format with a certain percentage like 0, 0.00 percentage. So you can talk with uh, one of the true use case uh, where my client wants to understand the sales uh, data. And in this, uh, he wants to know how the sales are growing year on year. So whether how it is changing the percentage. So for that, we I have implemented this tax done. So this way you can able to answer. So how do you write a DAX formula for cumulative approval? So a client wants to understand the cumulative, how frequently they are getting an approval. So you can use this uh, dates between as well as min DAX function uh, using your calendar table. So 
calculate some of uh, your date table how many are approved you can calculate then dates between and you you can take this your calendar date followed by minix all it, here i'm using a all filter which ignores all of calendar of calendar date comma max of calendar date so which in in this period i can able to get all these cumulative approvals the next question how do you create a measure for a running a total okay so running total is like calculate some of sales amount filter all of uh, date and uh, date of date should be less than of in your calendar table like the max which is a max uh, of your date it should be less than your uh, calendar date so that way it will create your uh, running total so you can add your real time scenarios the next how do you handle data transformations in power query so they started with data modeling then they moved to dax now they are asking few questions on the power query editor so the, my answer goes like this yes i have handled multiple data transformations in power query so where i have imported my data into the power query uh, in the in the transform ribbon i have done removing rows uh, remove null splitting the columns merging appending changing the data types and uh, some of the areas i worked on m code as well for a better refresh uh, rate and all so all this power query explanation you can able to uh, add your real time scenarios again so this way they are now moving to power query next can you explain how to use this m code for uh, custom data transmission now uh, they wanted to just check whether you are 3 years experience and uh, whether you got an opportunity to exposure to this m code or not so basically m code is a functional language uh, what we use in power query like sql we have uh, python we have right so in power query the language is an m code it works back end so yes, in 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 this M code also like a uh, few of the M code uh, functions like date dot from text, time dot from text, number dot from text. So it it converts text dates into date data type, text dates into time data type, text numbers into decimal data types. So like this, I have added a few three scenarios, but you can take from your real time. You can add into your explanation. And the next question goes like this: How do you create a dynamic chart? that updates based on user selection. So one of the real time scenario, let's say for example, I have year slicer and I have my five uh, charts in that report page. Uh, for example, if the client is clicking on 2025 and all the charts should also show the data related to 2025 in the title bar. So that for that, we wanted to change all the charts dynamically. So we can use a what if parameter or a disconnected table with slicer that can be one of the approach other table could other approach could be we can create a dax measure using a selected value to update the visuals dynamically so selected value of that year then we can concatenate with the chart title so this way we can able to achieve uh, to play with this dynamic chart which updates based on the user selection and the next could be how would you create a drill round and a drill through reports in power bi yes this is needed because to avoid multiple pages so sometimes we client wants more information so we use this uh, drill down and uh, drill through options uh, the, the base level things like drill down let's say you have a hierarchical chart like uh, year month quarter you know day charts we can create like this hierarchical in visuals itself like year quarter month day or drill through could be we can create a separate page with the detailed data so that users can right click on a data point and they will go back to the drill through so for a sales information i have created this drill through page and uh, based on the uh, user application ID, they can right click and they can able to get their demographic. They can they, they can get their salary. They can get their uh, product details. Everything they can able to get, particularly that application or a product ID. So in that case, I have created this uh, drill through page as well in my project. So this way, you can also add few more few more examples. So that will create a better impact in your interview. Next could be what techniques can be used to optimize the performance of a Power BI report because this is this is a mandatory and a default question in most of the Power BI interviews. So I am trying to make a detailed video on this, but uh, in short, if I can answer, uh, yes, one of the approaches could be the data modeling part where uh, I focus mostly on the star schema instead of the snowflake. I'll try to convert into star schema and other uh, performance improvement area where I'll try to uh, avoid the calculated columns in my power bi report uh, always possible i'll try to create the dax measure because uh, if i create a calculated column obviously an extra load being added in in my power query editor so if i refresh all the visuals every time it should go row by row and it have to give me the output right so if i prefer measure it is a calculated on the fly and one time it is goes and it, it can able to display n number of times to me and i'll always try to en en enable the aggregation 
questions at the uh, in the source level for example if if my client want only monthly level of data if my if i am having day wise 10 transaction i'll try to aggregate uh, my data into the higher hierarchies like a month level i don't want to push everything into my power bi and i don't want to make the reports low so this way also i can able to avoid a huge lo uh, data load uh, on my power bi another could be uh, uh, always possible i'll try to use the import mode instead of uh, uh, direct queries because if i hit refresh if i do if i want to change anything I'll always it go back to my source level and it, it should come back so import mode wherever possible i'll uh, i'll do that then i'll try to avoid row by row operations like uh, iterative function like some max max x and all so i'll try to optimize my dax by using variables and uh, i'll use different dax functions switch statements uh, different conditions uh, to avoid uh, uh, complex DAX uh, this way I can able to imp improve the performance of my power bi report so this way you can able to add but these are some general explanation but you can bring out some real-time story and you can add on it then how do you handle large data sets in power bi again this is a relative question to the previous uh, they wanted to understand whether you worked on with large data sets or not so yes I use a direct query or a composite model because an import cannot work with large data sets I always prefer a direct query there and uh, I try to implement aggregations and in incremental refresh uh, for this uh, uh, handling the large data set and I'll, I'll follow the methodology called uh, uh, partition in the uh, fact table which if the part fact table size is very bigger I'll, I'll try to use the methodology called partitions then I'll use the power bi premium capacity for a bigger models because it supports a uh, uh, different uh, capability of a storage size I don't want to use a, a smaller uh, license versions so I'll go with the premium capacity to handle the large large volume of data sets so this is one of the answer you can add multiple answers what are the benefits of using power bi premium now you said power bi premium now they wanted to understand you know a few questions on this power bi premium what kind of a license basically you are holding in your project whether you are having only power bi pro okay so this that is a clear sign that okay you are a general uh, you know normalized power bi developer whether you are having a premium it means okay premium in a project can be available to few users so uh, dedicated users or end to end developers so it it gives a better impact yes the benefits of uh, power bi premium is like a dedicated capacity I'll be getting for fast performance and also it will handle large volume of data set size uh, 400 GB uh, plus per data set I can able to handle and then incremental refresh can be supported and I can also implement uh, and develop the pagination reports for the clients and I can use the concept of deployment pipelines uh, not only that I can use an AI features and better governance uh, uh, throughout my data so these are the pro benefits and uh, I can play with the licensing access uh, you role based controls all that uh, things I can able to uh, handle this benefits with a power bi premium next how do you uh, integrate a power bi with uh, my other Microsoft service uh, let's say they wanted to understand whether you are only good with power bi or a SQL or you got an opportunity to expose with other Microsoft services to integrate uh, you can tell see in, in the in the get data you have different Microsoft connectors available right so you can just explore that option and you can say yes I have connected my Azure I have connected my power apps I have also connected my power automate so you can tell like this like in the Azure I have imported my Azure SQL and Azure data lake and Azure Synapse for analytics in power apps I have enabled apps inside the power bi reports so that any data feeding can happen and in a data input can happen through these power apps and also one one of the case scenario I have used power automate where uh, uh, I can the users can able to trigger workflows from the power bi uh, itself using with the help of power bi actions so it creates like okay creates an impact okay you are good with complete Microsoft power platform ecosystem which is nothing but power apps power automate power automate power BA and uh, Microsoft Azure as well so this gives a better motivation for the recruiter okay I can able to recruit this candidate he worked with multiple tech stack next question could be explain a challenging power BA project whether uh, uh, you know you really worked on it and how you addressed uh, uh, with the key issues so see this is a this is a kind of a solution uh, you you think of you take a paper pen and identify what problems you faced in your project and uh, let's identify top five problems and how you resolved it and then evaluate at the end with that five problems which can be explained and which is giving more impact to the recruiters take that story narratively and uh, take some better points and explain so one of the challenge could be where I was handling some 
200 million plus rows uh, in a sales data and the reports are taking almost close to two hours of refresh time and uh, you know users are disappointed to see the results uh, and it is taking more uh, efforts for them to wait. So the solution when I have deep dived, uh, this is being assigned as a ad hoc request directly from my manager. And I went into this report. I firstly, I identified the backend data model, how it is created. So the data is pulling from different, different uh, sources. Uh, I streamlined that with the help of a star schema. I combined everything and I have created a few dimension tables and a central fact table I've connected. Then I've used uh, aggregation because the 200 million rows of data is a day by day, 10 to 20 transactions each day the product is uh, the organization is generating so i used aggregation i have come i you know i've used week level aggregations month level aggregation then i uh, also approached the incremental refresh mechanism with this uh, power bi development is over then i've looked into the dax there are uh, different dax functions they are uh, already the developer you know used so i optimized the dax with the help of dax studio or i reviewed the each and every DAX and I thought okay this can be improvised in a better way so by replacing row context with a filter context I have seen some you know optimize the results for the DAX so at the end the what results I have got for my client the report refresh time is being reduced from close to two hours in the earlier scenario now it is being you know refreshing uh, less than 15 minutes so this is one of the recent challenge which I face and uh, these are all the key issues which I have I can able to address in that project so this way you can able to give better impact to the recruiter okay so far you have answered 14 so whoever watching this video if you have answered uh these 14 questions just comment on this video how many questions you can able to you know tackle let's say if you are if you know seven questions just comment seven if you know five just comment five if you know all the things then you can comment all the things or if you have any other doubts you can comment on this video i'll try to explain in a better way next how do you implement role level security in power bi because uh, this is again another um, most commonly asked so this can be done in two ways one could be small level of project where they have only a smaller level of people with a, a scope of uh, data is very low then i used the static uh, rls row level security with the help of uh, uh, dax function like region is equal to west or uh, uh, region is equal to south all those uh, west manager south managers can able to see their data and the other approach like i can uh, go to the power service or I, other i send users group to, just to check then uh, view as role in desktop uh, the dynamically could be i can use the dax function use a principal name then i can import one of the subsequent supporting csv or a sharepoint file uh, with the with that users i can able to dynamically give a role role based access to the users so it is basically to ensure uh, the data uh, whoever wants uh, other people can able to restrict from it so this way you can able to answer uh, almost two to three years of an experienced power bi developer questions so i believe you liked my explanation uh, if you have liked just uh, you know comment on this video how you how you want me to proceed for next videos so that i can i can able to know your opinion these are the questions uh, uh, they have asked and uh, if you if you have attended recent interviews or if you want to have a mock interview with me just reach out on my linkedin we can have a one on one discussion uh, to solve and make a video on that the next uh, the only thing what you can do just like this video comment on this video share with your friends and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon it will motivate for me to do more and more videos thank you so much for watching till the end of this video